parkour is as fast as possible, efficient as possible from a point A to a point B. But for me, it is uh, it is everything. It's a disappointment. It's progress. It's uh, training hard. It's uh, failing. It's learning. Um, in the beginning, it was like fun. Uh, 20 years ago, and then uh, after the trip to Tulis, after to train with David, it was not fun. It was uh, yeah. We realized that we didn't train for a while. It was just uh, jumping around. And so for me, it's, uh, it's, it's the life. To know that there were people pushing the limits and not copying anyone else and somehow had the motivation to get out and get on the edge of manpower and jump across that gap for like back then. I think understanding like the the, the old school philosophy and, and the roots of the sport is just super important um, to just appreciate it, to appreciate the founders and, and that really is to pr appreciate how much more intense it must have been to break through those physical barriers without any other examples. To me, parkour is where sport meets art and where discipline meets creativity. It's the best of every aspect that a sport of, or physical activity could have to offer. Woo! That was good, that was good. Yeah, in the last uh, uh, 30 years, parkour has changed a lot and I saw it when I do a documentary. Um, uh, I need a lot of different opinions. Uh, we have so many uh, top athletes in the world and uh, so many uh, different opinions. Uh, that was uh, a must. This is free running, also called parkour. Acrobatie spectaculaire des jeunes kamikazes qui donnent le sentiment de risquer leur vie à chaque instant. Go ahead, let's go for it. Oh, there you go. It landed good. All right, good. You continue. Oh. I love it. Overcome the mental obstacles. You can overcome the physical ones and perform what would normally seem impossible. That's the philosophy of the art form known as parkour. Parkour. Uh, the public reaction in 2000, it was uh, very funny because uh, there was uh, Chakas guys who were, were very famous and uh, when we were out and trained, a lot of the people, they said, ah, you're doing uh, Chakas, and then, uh, no, not really, we're doing Le Parcours. And today it's more mainstream because uh, in the movie, the YouTube, all the stuff, TV, um, uh, the people uh, see the guys who train ninja warrior or catch or uh, free running. The first few years, it was more about kind of defend what it is, um, to find out what it is. And then, um, yeah, a new generation comes in, bring new style. And normally the, the humans don't like too much changes. And that was, I think it was a little bit as well for us. The new style, the new, the new uh, generations, they were different and we were uh, a little bit afraid that they don't know about the history. We saw a big change going on from precision was not important as it is now, for example. And uh, yeah, the whole evolution, I guess, it's really important to, to bring it on, to bring it to the, to the new generation so everybody knows what, what it was all about and what it became now. I think history should be taught to the to the youngsters nowadays as well. The, the history is important for me because I started, I started parkour in Lis, uh, and it was like um, La Mecque, you know, the Mecque of parkour. And this is where I understand what is parkour. And I think for the whole generation like us, it's our goal to teach the history 
for a new generation. When I began parkour, I didn't know much about the history. I was in Orlando and I just saw these guys doing something that looked really, really fun. So I know that I would have been attracted to parkour regardless of what the history was. But when I learned about the history of parkour, I feel like it added a lot more gravity to, <laughs> to what I was doing. So for me personally, the history is something that I really do appreciate and that I try to teach students and I'm coaching. I mean, since I trained parkour for 13 years now, I don't think the history is that important anymore to me because I feel like I created my own history and this is what matters and will stick to me. So it, it doesn't really matter to me who started with it and all of this. I mean, of course it's important to know that, like who, who are the pioneers. Um, but in the end, like I see it like this, that I create my own history and it only matters to me. Um, I, I feel like for me, it's um, probably not as important as for other people who started way earlier than me. But I still think that history is a very important part of the sport of parkour. So I think that we should carry on um, spreading it. It's very important to know like the mindset of the people that, that started and that uh, where it comes from. I really experienced that kind of way of training, even though nowadays you can hardly find it. I feel like. And it's really hard to make people understand what how, how much it means like to not have gyms and to drill something a hundred times or just to do conditioning for like an hour and then try to do some jumps like people don't know but i think it's important and sometimes i fall back to this like when i train solo i start to, like i train like this like repeating something 20 times and just making it a little bit faster every time and then there's something to that that I still take in the, the training nowadays. I always pay attention to the history of parkour. I went to Toulis to learn more about the history. And then uh, I met David and uh, the other guys from La Relève. And uh, I always ask them uh, how, how, uh, how was the training uh, back in the days? What did you do? Why you did that? Because I couldn't ask David about that, because I know he's a, like a mysterious guy. So I always ask the guys about the, uh, the guys from La Relève. I always ask them uh, how was it back in the days. To be completely honest, I don't think that the history of parkour is that super important for me. Um, like I, I really. I enjoy hearing about uh, the history and everything that's happened, but it's not it's not something that that like uh, sort of takes up a lot of space in my mind. Uh, for me, the history is very important, uh, especially because I've been uh, very close to some of the founders of this uh, discipline, uh, and I I usually think that if you if you're not interested or aware of where you come from or where what you practice comes from uh, ah, you don't really know your uh, identity you know it's like not knowing not knowing your uh, parents or origins uh, and for me it's very important to to give back credit to the people who started the movement for the new generation if you don't know the history uh, it's not a big problem but uh, if you know the history, you can uh, learn a lot of things and maybe uh, you can do something better because you can learn uh, what we did before and try to improve. For us, what is important is the legacy and its transmission. And uh, we can all say we've been successful in the transmission. Even like it took different, it took different uh, direction and there is different way or different style. However, for us, if it was the, the aim was to spread it, I think we succeed on this.
Yeah, I definitely think through the practice of parkour that my values have changed. I think starting out, you know, again, lived in a rough neighborhood, um, was often in fights. I was kind of one of those kids that you could look at and go, you don't have a future, you know, or you're going to end up in prison, you know. Um, and yeah, when I found parkour as an outlet, it definitely radically changed. Yeah, my outlook, it definitely radically changed. It, it took that negative energy and I was able to channel it through the movement and it kind of you know enabled me to again uh, assess the obstacles with inside of myself through the practice that then radically you know 180 degree turn changed my kind of perspective on you know a lot of things so yeah I I hated school teacher uh, it was always negative stuff uh, in school and when I uh, started parkour I feel something different, you know, there is a wall, you can climb on it, there is a bar, you can vault it. So it was freedom and when people still, uh, told me, oh, you, you can't do that. But yes, I can, look, I can go over the wall, so I am free. I grew up in Morocco uh, until I was 18, 19 actually. I think I was 18 before I, uh, first time I left was to Denmark. But anyway, I grew up, my value was definitely um, like uh, like any other Moroccan kid, but a little bit different because uh, I'm, I'm happy my friends, my dad who was always like you know, trying his best. He was working so hard to, you know, to give me whatever I want and like try to make uh, life easy for me. So like, uh, yeah, it was a lot of values from that, doing a lot of values from that. And, um, when I start doing parkour, you know, I, I use those values in part my parkour, my parkour journey, my parkour training. With doing parkour, I got a lot more self-confident. And um, this is what I'm using now and which I which was good um, to have when I had my big accident. So yes, I would say parkour helped me in this way. When I came into parkour, I feel like it opened my mind a lot more to acceptance and a lot more uh, kind of tangible uh, relationships and information uh, for life that was able to translate into my wider life as opposed to that competitive uh, kind of cutthroat industry that something like ice skating or ballet would have provided. When I was six or seven, I was the competition guy. I have to, to win everything. I have to be the best in every sport because I, yeah, I realized that when I'm better than everybody else then I get the respect um, and there was only the first place and the second place was the second place was the first loser so I don't want to just win I want I want to win against the best and now since 20 years when I start with parkour I realized in sport it's a, that, that's a nice mind, mindset if you have this one, then you will reach a lot. But if you have the same in parkour, there is uh, someday you will, you will fall. And I think it's not healthy to, yeah, to fight against uh, each other. When I started, I was quite young. So my value is the value has been uh, given by my parents. You know, it's like uh, uh, try to be good in into bracket you know like uh, try to respect other people and to not uh, damage the environment all this stuff i added before parkour 
because my parents gave me a good education. And then with Sparkle came different values, which is more um, how to overcome uh, adversity, like the physical adversity. Because I did sport before, which you, you can challenge yourself in sport, but in parkour it's very particular. And uh, especially me, because I had vertigo and I was not very confident, uh, parkour gave me the extra, the extra bit that I needed, I needed to, to succeed in life. I think it has um, shaped who I am today and the values I, um, the values I have. And um, I'm not sure if it's just the people around. I'm not sure if it's just the people that uh, parkour attracts or the people that I've been around as well. But um, there seems to be uh, the majority of the people that I come into contact with will seem to have um, very similar views about a lot of things. and. Uh, and are mostly good people. I don't think uh, my values change through parkour. I kind of adapted my values and parkour gave me a lot of discipline. So uh, I didn't lost any values with parkour. <laughs> I get more values with parkour, I guess. I, I learned something new, but I think if I go and do other sport or other thing in life, I always will learn something. So it's kind of vague but parkour gave me a lot uh, to be honest and i think for me as a 14 year old starting parkour that gave me a lot of things to think about and a lot of ways to use parkour as a metaphor for what i was struggling with in life that i wouldn't have been able to yeah. so in a way i feel like it, it introduced me to a lot of uh, a different way of thinking and a different way of exploring i mean it's not like I was a bad guy and then I met parkour and then I became a good guy. No, I think parkour just gets out from you the things that you really, the, 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 the way you are actually, you know? So when you, I mean, when you train parkour and when you start to learn about the, the history, the values, the community that is put behind the jumps and everything, you start to realize like, how how you can help others just by practicing a sport it's weird but you know it's a it's a mental thing i think parkour influenced my values a lot and especially um i think parkour gave me much much more confidence um than i used to have back in the day just because <clears throat> I think what happens is you, uh, I'm not even sure how to put it. You uh, figure out that you are capable of a lot as you uh, train and, and you develop and you develop your mind and your, your physique. So um, yeah, you gain confidence. And I think Fako gave me that much more confidence to be very steady with my values. Everybody, when, when I tell some, somebody I do parkour, oh, that's uh, really dangerous because uh, injury and yeah. But actually in 21 years now, I only hit once the, the knee really bad. 
and yeah, some sometimes an ankle twist, but really, really accident or really big fails. There's a, only two or three, and that's uh, if if you, if you train every day, that's not much. I think that one of the one of the very important uh, topic that is not covered in, in parkour is uh, and is. Um, resting time like not just the training because everyone is focused on training and we forget about the, the resting time and if we know from the research that uh, for example the training for plyometrics plyometrics training you should do maybe twice or three times max in a week but we do it like if we train for six <laughs> six times a week maybe that's too much i think you can't avoid injuries completely um, there will always be some point in your life where you get an injury, but it's important that you don't risk too much because uh, maybe your risk um, will not worth the consequences you have to live with. I just had like two head injuries where I fell down on my head and <clears throat> I <clears throat> had to, um, to do a break for several for two or three weeks, but um, not that not that uh, injuries where you have like to stop parkour for two or three months. Like if you broke a leg or if you broke your arm or whatever. We learn to train in a very non-harming way, so to say, so that you always, when you do a jump, you always know you can do it. You're always sure you can do it. So this. This lowers the risk of injuries. From my personal experience, the moments I've been injured in this discipline are the moments I've learned so much about uh, what, I'm, what I do and myself. So for me, it's a very important part of training. Falling is a very, is a very important part of training. Yeah, it's just, it just shifts your perspective on training. While I was injured, I did train more than more than before, but in another way. So it's just, um, you have to change your perspective and then you can still go on. And that's the beauty of parkour. You don't have a fixed goal. You can just set your goals yourself. So it's not a problem. It's just how to deal with injury. Parkour is all about overcoming obstacles and finding strength in you know these challenges that present themselves to you in the environment. And I think that Injury, old age, having a tiring job, you know, having to wake up early, getting to bed late. These are all just challenges that happen to everybody throughout their life. And if your parkour training doesn't help you adapt to that, uh, I think there might be a little switch in your brain that hasn't gone off yet. And sometimes it does take an injury to, to flip that switch. Um, sometimes it can be something else, you know, it could be having a kid and realizing that you need to schedule your training a little bit more or you know it could be like working your training around school or a job so i don't know if i would say that injury is necessary but i do think that challenges and hardship kind of help us mature in the way that we interact with parkour and how we kind of weave it into our everyday life you know, sometimes you just got to go through that stuff to 100% to, to know about this. You know, everyone can tell you, hey, this is dangerous, this can be painful. That, and that's not the same lesson as when it actually happens to you. So one thing, actually, that is my first and hopefully the last injury I've actually had in parkour. I was using a mat. <laughs> I was using a mat for safety reasons. And guess what? I dislocated my little finger. It wasn't too bad. It was totally fine. I was able to train afterwards. But um, mats don't mean safety. And that is something I've learned from from this. And after, after I used this mat, I realized, okay, this was actually making me feel very comfortable in a, in a move that is actually quite difficult. So I didn't really focus anymore. And I, I got injured and um, this this was, I think, well, it was an experience that was maybe necessary for me because I've been using that all the time. It can help you, I think, because you know, if I get injured, I can come back, come back, and 
do kind of the same stuff. Um, but it depends on the injury, I guess. Yeah. But for me, it helped me. I think it helped me. The worst ones were at the beginning, when I didn't have experience or anyone to tell me what was right or wrong in the sport. So I didn't have like any information to learn from. And that's when I started maybe like bailing more and get more injuries. Like I broke a wrist after one year of training. And also like I broke my foot uh, two or three years, uh, three years after. And that's the worst injuries I had. Like after that, I didn't got, I had like minor injuries, like maybe shin or something, but not anything serious, you know. I think uh, the, the statistic is um, you have more practitioners or you have more accidents. And so you have more injury too. Uh, the problem now is uh, to have uh, exposition. People try to do the most crazy things are possible and that make view or exposition. So uh, it's a danger things, but it's nice too because uh, most of the, uh, the practicing, practicing is uh, when you see uh, an amazing thing, we are the first to say, wow, crazy. So, um, yeah, I think that it's really important in different association of, uh, of parkour to, to teach to young people to, to be careful with the, the body, uh, with the training. Um, but you, you, I think you, you can't uh, stop the, the, to push the limit every time and take uh, more and more and more risk. I learned a lot of stuff from my injuries. It's like, because when I get injured, I start thinking about what uh, did I do wrong? So all the process actually helping me to realize, oh, my technique was wrong. Or like, um, I don't know, I did something something wrong. I didn't focus enough or like something like that. I think all, all my injuries um, taught me something. Um, but like, like, I don't want to get injured to honest, like, <laughs> and so that's why I like, that's why I like, um, I think training smart is really important at that point, because um, you should be training, like, you try to train without any injuries, but also like, you can learn from injuries as well. It's kind of the way that look at it in a positive way, I guess. I think you can learn a lot from injuries. I learned a lot during during my um, discovery with with uh, my knee my knee pain and my knee injury, also with my back pain. You learn a lot um, how to listen to your body when when you have to stop, um, how to calculate uh, the time of your recovery and stuff. If you never have an injury, you just keep on training the same way that you started, like in the beginning. Once you have the injury, after the injury, when you get back, you're more like cautious about these things. You have to train with with the obstacle, with with the other tracers, so you can push each other to the limit. And um, I think in, in the other sports, it's normally you, you fight each other, and then you have a winner and a loser. And in the parkour community, you, you train together and then in the end of the training, both are the winners. And it doesn't matter if you did the jump or not. I'm not, I'm an ambassador of parkour, but not in a way like I'm a politician and I want something for parkour. Yeah. I'm just, I behave and I hope my behavior will inspire some people. But I think what is bizarre now is parkour, people want uh, to be the representative for parkour. Like, like they always talk about the community this and the community that. And I don't believe there is a community. Uh, for me, I believe there is a culture, it is a parkour culture, like you can have a hip hop culture, but the hip hop culture from the 70s or 80s is not the same from now. So the culture is still here, but it evolved. And for me, parkour is like that. I hope that we're gonna stick to our history and to our values and to our culture, and that we're gonna not be looking to like take ideas from skaters and stuff like this because it's happening a little bit now that we so I can see some of the new generation really getting lost between parkour culture and the skate culture and a lot of things are starting to look too much like we are copying skate culture and we forget that we do have a really cool history and I, I hope that kids are gonna look into that maybe hopefully but it's also up to us to spread this today the, the, the amount of confidence it gives you 
it, it gives you this this level of confidence in yourself and and just when you when you realize that your body is actually able to do these things and when you see other people's bodies doing these things the confidence it gives you and the ability it gives you to think quickly like make quick decisions and and have a, a like decision based mindset where you're like i am doing this because obviously you can't hesitate um i think those two things are like for for a lot of people who do parkour I've noticed that the the mental and emotional stability is much higher mm. and it's for those reasons so when you do parkour just remember those benefits the success is is, is down to how much you work through it to some extent so like with me like always I'm I'm like a strong drive to like work and you know to solve sort of make um I think I've always like try to just, like do you know do the best of what I do kind of thing like whether it's you know gaming or working or training or you know filmmaking you know I'm always trying to do you know the best and I'm never really satisfied you know I'm always trying to do more um so I think you know that's where my success came from is is me constantly making content and going to all these parkour events trying to get, you know, sort of, I guess, no interest for doing something that you know, I enjoy. And... Yeah, so the motivation for training. I think for me, it, it the stimulus to train was always the people that I did it with. I think back in the early days, it was very much, the movement was the excuse to meet with people that were like-minded. Whereas nowadays, and maybe maybe it isn't, maybe it's the same for a lot of the younger kids. But from my own experience as an, as a, as a whether, whether it's second gen or however it's described in the parkour world, you know, I'm in, I'm in a different story and a different you know experience, and I've often found that that um, yeah, that kind of original, I don't know, innocent kind of approach to things isn't as common uh, as it used to be. Although I do look at, I see a lot of, I see a lot of Phil getting, Phil Doyle investing a lot of time again back into the community and like hanging out with the guys. And, um, yeah, I absolutely love doing that. So that's actually when I, I guess when I look at my immediate future, I do get excited by the idea of wanting to move again purely based on what I see him doing. And, uh, and then my brother Chris, you know, he's also investing back into the community and, and creating opportunities and looking to create jams and stuff. And so. Yeah, I definitely sense it coming back, but yeah, I don't know. For me, it was always just the stimulation uh, with the people that I was with, and then when everyone kind of parted, it kind of yeah, you know, I kind of maintained it, and it you know, it was a job, and I've I've done various commercials and a bunch of other stuff since then, but you know, I guess my uh, you know, I, yeah, the stimulus for wanting to go out and move the same way is kind of not as it once was. If I'm asked what my motivation is to train parkour, it's really simple. It's not that deep at all. It's just fun. It's just really fun. <laughs> the reason I think it's so fun is because it's taxing physically and it is just as taxing mentally because of the fear aspect and because of the problem solving aspect that comes with putting together a run and getting your steps right. And so, yeah, it's just fun. I think I do it like 18 hours a day if I'm not eating or something. So yeah, it's really not a sport. It's more part of my life than actually a hobby or something. I didn't really have like a social circle in school when I, from what I remember, like I didn't have like an obvious bunch of people that I would go and, and hang out with or, or whatever. And parkour then just instantly gave me that. It gave me like, it gave me a bunch of people around me that were all a lot older and they were really like focused on 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 training on progression on like every part of your daily routine is just to get better at this sport or get more intelligent so that you can train more efficiently or whatever like i was always around these dudes that were just like proper nerds like you know fucking talking about how they're gonna how they're gonna match up their conditioning routine every single night with their training on the weekend because we all had school in the middle of the week and stuff so i think i just like 
through wanting to be like those guys, through wanting to be like the superheroes that they all were in my eyes when I was, you know, 12, 13, 14. I just like adopted the same values that they all preached every single day. And I think um, since then, I've just tried to apply them in as many ways as possible really to my life, I think. Yeah, first I want to thank everybody um, who was helping to do this documentary. And um, yeah, it's a really, really uh, nice uh, project and I really hope you like it. And uh, the most important thing, I think, for, for, for everybody who's doing parkour or is doing uh, another sport is um, never stop moving. Um, doesn't matter where are you from or uh, how old are you or uh, for how long you train, we are all at the same place and that's before the next step.